My name is Jenny, and I'm a wife and mom raising two kids. But I used to live a more glamorous life as a TV reporter. I was on the nightly news interviewing pop stars and politicians. So when I said goodbye to TV and hello to motherhood, I suddenly discovered what we moms are up against. We live in a world that tells us to be rich and famous, thin and successful. You know, almost nobody says, oh, oh hey, you're a mom? That's fabulous. But you are fabulous, and I'm here to tell you why. It's the Channel Mom Show, celebrating you with Jenny Dean Schmidt. You are listening to the Channel Mom Show, where we are celebrating you as a mother and trying to help you with your job right here on Mile High Sports Radio, AM 1510, 90, uh, FM 93.7. I am your host, Jenny Dean Schmidt. Very quickly, before we go to our wonderful guest, I want to touch back on that recall. Kyle looked it up for us, and uh, apparently the Colorado CDC says that we have no cases reported in Colorado of salmonella connected to the turkey recall, just so you know. And finally, I'm going to quick get this news story in. If you're a mom, you've obviously given birth to children or you've adopted children and that you need to take into public with you. Usually, you know, you need to take those kids. Usually, Usually. they come with you when you go. Exactly. So what do you think of a new trend showing more businesses are opting to go child-free? This story is from Focus on the Family. Just two weeks ago, McDane's Restaurant and Golf Center in Pennsylvania implemented a new rule that bans children under the age of six. And in Missouri, Whole Foods announced a, quote, child-free shopping hours, you know, set of child-free shopping hours. <laughs> this summer, Malaysia Airlines announced a ban on babies in their first-class cabins, and other airlines are apparently expected to follow suit. Some movie theaters have started offering adult-only viewings of films that would otherwise be of interest to the entire family. So it's not that they're R-rated or anything. The president of Focus asks, is this simply a matter of business, of catering to public demand, or does it point to something more unfortunate in our culture? That's Can you do that legally? I mean, Malaysia, whatever, but Whole Foods? I don't, Can Whole Foods really do that? I don't. Are they just going to stop people at the door who have kids? I mean... <laughs> I, I mean, look, I understand that, that some children can be irritating if they're screaming all the time and they're they're poorly behaved and they're not being disciplined. But wow. <laughs> so you go up to Whole Foods just to grab, a you know, a jar of garlic and they say, sorry, got to drop the baby. I yeah. guess I guess you go to the stores who want the babies and spend yeah. your money there. That's, I just find that interesting. Boy, if you have an opinion on that, please call us at 303-297-1510. And now if you need a little boost as a mother today or how about just being a woman we have got the right guest for you. Carol Ladd is the author of The Power of a Positive Mom, Thrive, Don't Simply Survive, and her latest book, A Woman's Secret to Confident Living, plus another a number of others. This is book that I just mentioned, A Woman's Secret to Confident Living, is the one that I'm really, really eager to talk about. Carol is a mom and is also known as the positive lady, which can be intimidating to know that she's a positive lady after I admitted my yelling session. And uh, even if you are not a positive lady, she can help you get there. So welcome, Carol. Thank you, Jenny. It's so great to be with you today. Oh, it's wonderful to have you. And we, I want to urge our mamas to call you if they want to, 303-297-1510. All righty. I cannot wait for you to answer this very first question in a way that will help every mom who's listening to us today, and maybe even some dads too, but just to help their, their you know, wives out. What is the secret to living confidently as a woman? You know, there are many secrets, and uh, women are constantly trying to find, uh, to build their own confidence. But I think one of the most important things for women to do if they are d desiring to be more confident is to get their eyes off of this themselves, constantly looking at, oh, am I being perfect? Am I doing this right? Also getting their eyes and their focus off of uh, comparing to others. Oh, apparently we lost Carol. Can we try to get her back? I also have an alternative number for Carol. You know, as, as we're waiting to get her back, I'm going to read a pitch in the book that uh, she's referring to here. And there's what the pitch says. If everything in your life was peeled away, what kind of person would be left standing? Would you still have confidence in your own abilities? All too often we define ourselves by money, a nice home, cars, beautiful things, or how we look. Struggles with insecurity and self-confidence are now daily battles. What is shown on TV only adds to the increasing fire that women are feel that they feel like they're not enough because they fail to recognize that their true identity is found in a much deeper source. Carol Ladd 
who's the author and speaker, believes that it is not only when women truly understand their purpose and walk with a God confidence, a confidence that they get just knowing that the creator made them well, will they become what they were created to be. So she urges you in this little pitch for the book to stop yourself from becoming a prisoner of this world and allow yourself to live with a purpose and confidence as you discover a woman's secret to competent living. Dan, are you needing that alternative number? Okay. Here, Shell, just give that to him. So what do you think about that, Shell? She says that one of her, um, you know, biggest, the, the things that she finds the most, you know, troubling for, for women is that they tend to compare themselves to other women and that they don't measure up or they compare themselves to the television or they, you know, they're all the, uh, you look at the magazine covers or, you know what I mean? And you see the Hollywood movie stars having babies and you see the mom portrayed on the sitcom and, you know what I'm saying? And you see the fashion mom and then you see your neighbor who is making it all look good. And she says, comparison is what's leading us to some of our biggest insecurities. What do you think of that? I'm totally guilty of that. Now, here's something to admit live on okay. air. <laughs> okay. I mean, see, I kind of sometimes take delight when like, you know, you're in the line of the grocery store and you see the celebrities, um, I don't know, struggling with their hair that day or whatever. This is the bad hair day week where they, you know, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I kind of take delight in that. Oh, yay. That, you know, beautiful, famous person struggles with their hair too. Yeah. Yeah. Or even, <laughs> I mean, pathetic. okay, let's even be really honest. Sometimes when another child is having a meltdown instead of mine, I'm like, okay, all right. Wonderful. You know, at least that's not me. I mean, truly, I think we sort of do that to each other, you know? All right. I think we have Carol back. Welcome back, Carol. Well, thank you, Jenny. Sorry for that little blip. <laughs> and I don't know what part, of, uh, if you heard some of my answer or not, that yes. I, uh, let's let's pick up where we left off. Yeah. Uh, 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 the comparison thing, which Shelly and I were just talking about, and I read a little uh, pitch for your book about how we need to have confidence in, in how God made us and the ways in which we are good instead of constantly comparing ourselves to others. And, and the sort of, um, I don't know what it is, sort of, rift we create between, amongst mothers because we're constantly comparing and competing and, and wanting yeah. to be better. And, and so talk about that. Yeah, well, you know what? I think probably the, one of the most positive things we can do in our lives is to take that picture of perfection off the wall and uh, d just be very realistic. Be realistic about our shortcomings, but not dwell on them, but be very realistic about them. But then also re recognize that we also, each of us, have strengths and talents and gifts, and, and we need to build on those. And that's the same with our kids. As we look at our kids, we don't want to build on what's wrong with them. We want to switch that focus to what's good about them. What can they, what can we build on in their lives and what can we help them offer this world? And so, uh, it, both with our kids and with uh, ourselves, we've got to quit dwelling on the negative. And I think that that's the other problem, Jenny, that most of us have is that we, we do this negative self talk. Yeah. We beat ourselves up in the brain yeah. and, and we have to learn to train our minds differently. And, and we can do that. We don't have to be susceptible to just constantly thinking about what's, what's wrong or reflecting on our mistakes. Right. I mean, I, I was telling you when we talked yesterday before this interview that, that I've read research by a woman named Dr. Caroline Leaf says who switched off my brain. And she talks about that idea that we can change our habits. And, and I think there's this, this theory out there that it takes three weeks. H how, how would you suggest to a mom that she shut that off? Because I struggle with it. My friends struggle with it where you, we just get caught in that conundrum, uh, that ruminating on the same negative thing about ourselves or about our child or about our husband. How do we just say, nope, no more. How, how do we do that? Yeah, well, you know what, I think the very first thing, and, and trust me, I, I, even me, known as the positive woman, I, I have that negative self-talk now, and then it just pops in there. It just, it just happens. So what we want to do, first of all, is recognize it. Recognize that, okay, wait a minute, this is not healthy. This is, uh, I'm being negative, or I'm focusing on uh, a worry or a mistake that I made or maybe even a bitterness that I'm, I'm reveling in. I am hurt. Oh, they hurt me. Mm -hmm. So I have to recognize, first of all, that I, uh, this negative self-talk. And, and we all need to be a little bit more cautious of it and just say, whoop, okay, there I'm going. I'm going again off on this self-talk. And then the most important thing is once we recognize it, to stop 
and replace it with something good. Now, good, uh, good talk, uh, good self-talk, healthy self-talk comes in many different forms and fashions. And uh, one of the most important things we need to do is, first of all, focus on the truth. Focus on what, what do I know is true? Am I just off and worrying about something that is not true? Uh, and then also I need to reframe my challenges and think, okay, wait a minute, what, how could I look at this challenge differently? I, I have a challenge here. That might be the truth. But how can I look at it differently? How can I look at it as an opportunity right. to learn and grow um, I, we need to do that with our mistakes. As we focus, uh, as we have mistakes that happen, certainly we all make mistakes. Our kids make mistakes. We make mistakes. But if we focus on it and keep telling ourselves what a bad person we are, that gets us nowhere. But if we reframe that mistake and say, okay, wait, I did goof up. I screwed up. What can I do now? How, what can I learn from it? Mm-hmm. And what can I, how can I use this as an opportunity to grow and get better? Right. And so it's all about reframing our thinking. Reframing. And it's, it's, it's even a word to maybe repeat to ourselves <laughs> as yeah. we're in the midst of one of those things. And, and actually, I had to reframe yesterday, Carol, because I had <laughs> a period of yelling at my, my preteen son. And I did. I, I, for a while, you know, you do get caught in that. Just uh, It almost feels good to feel sorry for yourself and feel bad uh-huh. about yourself and just uh-huh. beat yourself up internally. You think, this is good. This is good. It's all, <laughs> you know, all, doing this to yourself. But I knew that I had to reframe. And you're right. And for me, it usually takes, and I think it probably varies from mom to mom, but I, I, I told my son, I, I just need a minute. I'm just going to lock myself in the car and pray. <laughs> <laughs> and so I prayed until... I was right, you know, I mean, until I got myself in the right frame of mind. And then, mm-hmm. you know, you said, tr- turn it into something positive. I, uh-huh. I, I went to that place where I said, all right, I could talk about this on the radio. <laughs> Isn't that horrible? <laughs> anyway, yeah. I, but, you know, I can be real with other moms and say, look, yeah. I had a, a bad day yesterday as a mother, and I'm just here to admit it to you. So, yeah, we can reframe. Is there a way for moms to say, I just can't do it. I find myself just beating myself up and so negative, and, and I can't stop myself when I get into that place. Is there a physical way she can remove her? herself from it so that she can start over and reframe as you say yes i i there there definitely is and you know what sometimes it does mean to, uh, to going into a different environment to either move to a different room or go outside or some place that you find refreshing or away from the immediate source that is making you um <laughs> angry at yourself or angry at somebody else so yes i uh, uh, moving to a different location may help as far as just just uh, taking a step outside or doing something a little bit different. But then it is, I think it's very helpful, and, and we all learn or, or uh, do things differently, but for me personally, I need to write things down. And so what I like to do, especially in the midst of uh, something frustrating or negative, I, I need to write down, okay, what can I learn from this? And I also need to write down, what are some of the things that I can be thankful for? Are there ways, and I I literally make myself write down at least three things that I am thankful for, that I can be thankful for in this situation. And, And sometimes it's hard to think of those. But you can, you can find good things like right. you did yesterday. You found that, ah, this has allowed me to have something to talk about that's very real. Right. Um, you know, maybe an uh, argument with our husbands allows us to say, hmm, maybe, maybe this is an opportunity to, uh, to build and connect on a different level, to talk about things, to apologize if I need to. This is an opportunity for me to learn more about forgiveness. Yeah. Uh, this is an opportunity for me to trust God and to lean into Him more than uh, leaning into my own self. Right. And uh, so, so there's always something that we can be deliberate about finding uh, something good in it. But for me, it sometimes takes a opportunity to write it down. I even have a journal where I write down. Uh, the things that I'm thankful for. And I do that every day, actually. And Carol, but, um, we're going to come right back with you, my dear. Sure. <laughs> I want to I want to address that again. And we are talking to Carol Ladd, author of more than 20 books and really wants to talk to us about a woman's way to live confidently. And I'm really looking forward to learning more about that. So join us coming back. We'll have Carol again. 